Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing my out-of-box review for the Real Grade Build Strike Gundam Full Package. So as you can see, here is not the actual full package mode, just because it's missing that huge backpack flyer thing, so I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, this is a design that, again, I was not really all that much looking forward to. I, I really like real grade kits, so I was sure I was going to enjoy the build either way. Because I always enjoy building real grades, they're fun, and they look really great, like just out of the box. Um, and... Yeah, but the, like the big thing for me was just the backpack. I really just didn't like the, especially the wings on this backpack. Nothing against like wings on Gundams, but just this one in particular, the wings look really goofy, kind of odd. Just don't really look that good to me. But anyway, so I've built it, and I've got to say I have come around to the design quite a bit, and uh, I do have plans for this actually. Get back to that in a little bit. But so yeah, just thank you as always to Mind Phoenix Hobby Store for sending me this kit to share with you guys and just kind of. Uh, experience and get to enjoy myself here. So one thing about the design compared to the original RG Ale Strike is I don't really care for how much the lower legs especially are bulked up in this case. Uh, the lower legs and especially like the ankle armor is much larger, bulkier than with the Ale Strike. Um, I, I prefer like longer, thinner legs myself. Uh, so these are just have a different look to them and so I don't know the fleet, the feet are kind of like from the front especially, they look kind of like small and flat, and then you have like these really big, huge like uh, ankle armor and lower leg armor uh, above that. It just looks a little bit odd to me, the proportions there. Uh, but everything else looks really cool, and like the clear armor parts are kind of cool. They're a little bit like not really spaced out that well, I feel like. There's a big clear armor piece on the front of the knee, and then a couple little bits just on the front of the ankle armor and on the shoulders. So I kind of wish there was maybe like one or two more in like a couple other places. They just seem a little bit like uh, not really well balanced in the placement of those clear parts but they're okay uh, so anyway it does add a little bit of kind of cool uh, look to it just rather than it just being just a straight just plain regular Gundam armor having a couple little bits of clear does give it a little bit more unique look um, otherwise just building the kit was fine it, it does have a couple of runners from the original Ale Strike and you can see a, a couple of parts recognizable from that kit uh, but not really all that much, actually. It didn't really feel like I was just building the Ailstrike again, so that was cool. It's, I have built that kit, but it has been a few years, so I wouldn't really remember it that well, but I have built it going way back. Anyway, so let's get a look at some of the articulation. As with uh, all real grades, the articulation is really nice. You do have a little bit higher chance of some parts kind of like falling off or uh, just kind of coming apart and things like that, as usual with real grade kits, but I feel like this one's pretty solid. Uh, just the head with that really huge V-fin on there and just a really cool head design. It's one of the things that I know myself and others uh, really like about the Build Strike Gundam is just the head. The four Vulcans on the sides of the head uh, is a cool design and just overall pretty cool look. So I like that. Uh, I, Of course this kit does have a lot of stickers just to Refresh your memory. Here's uh, that big huge sticker sheet. All I've used is the eyes. Just those two there for the eyes in this case uh, For this so the head will look up to about there so good range looking up and then down uh, To there so really nice articulation there in the neck. No problems with that the shoulders the shoulder armors are uh, Shoulder armor is just attached like a lot of real great armor shoulder armor is it just like kind of snaps down onto there So that will be on there it can move up to there the arm itself can move up to about there, so nice articulation there in the shoulder as well. Forward uh, will pull out to there, so nice movement there as well. We have this little panel on like the top of the uh, top of the torso that will move up when you move that stuff up. Otherwise, it, it can uh, lay back flat down there. Uh, so shoulder armor, uh, shoulder articulation also really nice. Uh, this piece here in the side of the shoulder armor that will move a little bit as well, that kind of vent piece. Don't really think that's really meant to move that much or you're probably not going to really care to move it much, but if you did care about that. Uh, rotation here at the top of the arm of course, double joint in the elbow of course. And uh, this armor sliding gimmick in the arm is pretty cool. And I'll watch when I bend the arm, you see this panel there on the bottom will slide back uh, together with this elbow piece. 
So that's a pretty cool uh, gimmick when you slide that part right there. That's pretty cool. And then just overall, just a kind of nice color separation. You can see the three different tones of white there, the kind of white, off-white, and the kind of like very, very light tan color there in the bicep, a couple of couple different tones of white there on the arm as well, as well as that small little blue piece there to break that up. On the front we have a little bit of gray poking through to break up the white there. Uh, so nice color separation there on the arms as well. I do like these hands quite a bit, a little bit different shape of hands, and I'll, when we go over the accessories and stuff I'll point out the other hands that come with the kit. Uh, but I do like the shape of these hands that we get with this one. Uh, in the torso, this cockpit will open up, but I'm having a little trouble getting it to open. There we go. Finally, this uh, lower blue part here, you have to slide out, and then that kind of, I guess, supposed to fold up. And it looks like my whole torso assembly looks to be coming apart, so I'm not sure if I'm doing this exactly right. There we go. I to get my knife out. Uh, there we go. So the cockpit does open up like so, and the front square armor does fall off, uh, for now anyway. Just plug that back on there. Anyway, so yeah, the cockpit opens up. There is a cockpit inside there, but no pilot. It's just kind of open thing. It's something I don't really care too much about that. They build that into the real grade kits, but it just seems kind of unnecessary. Uh, I kind of wish they just kind of wouldn't bother with that and just worry more about the articulation and stuff and not worrying about building in a cockpit. But anyway, uh, the articulation here and the torso, we're going to have a bend there to the side. Pretty good. Back, not really too much. It feels like it's just kind of hitting this back skirt stuff forward uh, to there, so a nice forward crunch, you can see all the way to there, so that's pretty good. Uh, just taking a look at the backpack here, just pretty standard. This is probably the part of the kit that's going to look the most just like the regular ale strike when you look at it from the back here, back of the torso and the skirts there. Uh, side skirts, we've got rid of those ugly side skirts from the ale strike, uh, for, or from the, just from the strike Gundam, and replaced them with kind of similarly ugly side skirts for the build strike to be honest. We have the beam saber handles here in these side skirts and then just these kind of this kind of like fin design here. Uh, one of my parts actually broke in here, so just be a little bit careful with that. Uh, and then the hips are here. We'll just have an extra base connector we can connector piece we can plug into that. Uh, of course we're just gonna have some rotation here at the top, and then when we bend the armor separate the armor will separate here uh, in the thigh and in the knee. You can see we get a really nice full bend there uh, at the knee uh, with this nice separation here at the kneecap and then in the thigh armor revealing some really nice detail inside there on the frame as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, so let's we'll fold that back up carefully just so that everything doesn't fall off. There goes one of the other skirt armors. Then going down here to the ankle, as you can see we have this very very large ankle armor piece which is just kind of like floating there. It's just attached in uh, at the back of the foot, like kind of the sides of the foot I guess, but then it's like attached onto the back of the foot. Uh, thankfully there's no toe separation piece. So a lot of real grade kits have like a separate toe piece there. I don't really care too much for that. Uh, this whole front part is kind of a separate piece but it doesn't really move separately all that much. You can see just like a tiny bit there. I'm kind of happy about that because I really don't care too much for that gimmick at all. But then pointing down is all the way to there. No problem with that. Nice detail up underneath the feet. Uh, so that's good as well. So overall, just good articulation. Great, I would even say. So that's nice. So let's talk about accessories. So aside from the closed fists, which you saw on the kit, you have these set of just real great hands, which are not great, not really all that useful, but they are articulated if you really care about like really articulated hands. And then our only other hand option is just one trigger finger for a rifle, and that's it. I wish we had a set of like actual like posed, fixed posed open hands instead of these. I mean, you can do you can do open hands with these real great hands, but again, they're not really the greatest. You'll notice a little bit different shape here in these hands. The closed fists and the trigger finger are not only a different color uh, in their molded color, they look to be a whole different size and quite different shape as well. So that's kind of unfortunate. It looks kind of silly. I really like these closed fists. Don't really care too much for this trigger finger hand just being it being so different. I'm sure when it's actually on the rifle, probably no one's really going to notice that too much, but we do also of course have our two pink beam saber effect parts for the beam sabers. The handles they're molded in the side skirts. We have our connection piece for connect connecting it onto an action base. We have our super tiny 144 scale Sei Iori figure which seems to be holding something, I guess probably a Gumpla 
which would be uh, like 144 scale of a 1144 scale Gunpla there. It's pretty much nothing, but uh, that's kind of interesting. And among all of the extra parts that we get on the runners from the original Strike Gundam, there's some kind of cool parts that you could actually use on this if you wanted to. Uh, one thing worth noting, though, is you get the Strike uh, Daggers. These have some certain name, I'm sure, and I haven't cleaned up the nub marks on them. I just wanted to show these to you guys, for example. So you have both of these you could use, I guess, if you want, and just they fold up like that. And like for the Ale Strike, these are stored in the side skirts. Uh, but in this case, you don't really have anywhere to store them. But if you did want to use them, or if you want to use them with a different kit, you can do that. Then we have our shield, which I've never really cared too much for the shield design, but it doesn't look too bad now in the real grade form, I've got to say. Uh, I just have like the one cannon there at the end, and then just some nice molding here with a lot of details. One to three connection points there on the front, and then one, two on the back for doing some stuff. We'll get to that in a bit. And then this connection piece here, which again is pretty standard. It's ball joint here, and this just plugs onto the back of the arm there. Then we have our gun, which is just a kind of beam pistol here in its basic form, but then we have a couple different options you can do with that. So you can plug this piece on, you kind of like push that barrel back and then just drop this down onto that part there, there we go, uh, to make it into a more like beam rifle. So that's pretty cool, still a little bit basic, it's not really to my taste, but it's kind of cool that you can do that option. But then, the option probably most people will use is to take this part off and then we'll put on this big white part to turn it into a big beam cannon. So we'll just put that on there, drop that back, and then you just kind of close this up. And there we go. This is the mega beam cannon thing. I don't know the, the technical name for it. Sorry, guys. But the point is, this is pretty cool. Um, like This one as well, not really uh, ideal to my particular taste, so not really too excited about this particular weapon. Uh, we have the clear green piece in there, and we have the handle that will fold out here on the side. For holding that and it's an interesting thing that's for sure uh, just again not really to my personal taste one thing that's cool about this stuff so you can see here that this piece uh, if I can get this off has this little tab here on the bottom and then this other piece also has a similar tab those are for you can actually store these on the shield so in the manual it shows you can like store it on the inside of the shield there but I suppose you can store it on the outside of the shield as well it's the same connection point I guess but I guess maybe it's not gonna hold on there so yeah, I guess you could kind of do that, and it stays on there well enough. There you go. If that was something you wanted to do for some reason, maybe just like omit this back part and then just have like this front like huge cannon part just plugged onto the shield. Could be kind of interesting. Not something I'm going to do, but maybe you want to try it. And then of course we have the build booster. Now this thing is pretty cool. All I could think on its own it actually looks pretty nice. Um, I kind of prefer it on its own rather than actually on the Gundam. It's a pretty nice looking just flyer here. You can like change up the pose. I don't know if you wanted to have it like something more like this or something or uh, just the wings more back. I don't know. Whatever you wanted to really do with that. It's kind of totally up to you. But some cool options there. In terms of just plugging this onto an action base, you can just plug your action base connector just onto the bottom of here and just have this flying on its own if you want. These cannons are movable like that. So you can fold these kind of like all over the place. And you could have them just like pointed back or something if you wanted to instead of pointed forward for like flying like that or like this or kind of whatever you wanted to do. I don't know. You can uh, get creative with that. In terms of mounting it onto the backpack, we just pull up this piece and that part is just going to fold down. And then basically then this just plugs straight onto the back. We got to rotate these wing parts up and... Well, that sucks. In my attempt to do this, you can see this engine part just kind of like slides open and close like that. Kind of open and then close like that. In my attempt to do that, I broke off the tip of this wing, just like touching that with my thumb. That really sucks. It's a really, really thin, narrow piece, so just be careful. That'll be really, really easy to just fix. Just glue that back on. I just have to find it first. It fell on the floor. Anyway, uh, I'll find that later and glue that back on. Not really too big of a deal. But uh, yeah, I'll just be a little bit careful with that, more careful than I'm being. Uh, and then this, this just plugs onto the back. And there you go, you got your Build Strike Gundam full package. Well, as you can see, managed to get that little tip of that wing glued back on. And uh, yeah, in the process of picking up my bottle of Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, I was using it before and I didn't screw the top back on, so when I picked it up by the top, the thing just 
flew up in and spilled a bunch of glue on my phone, which is good. So uh, I think that'll be okay though. Just be careful when you're not using this glue or any product, I guess. Just make sure the cap is back on when you're not using it. Anyway, lesson learned. And this review is feeling like a big hot mess right about now, but <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, posing the Gundam is not a problem at all. Um, it's very easy to pose, uh, just like the Ale Strike was. So, yeah, the posing is good. And of course, for anyone wondering, you can easily do the classic Ale Strike pose, as poor a representation as my uh, attempt at it here may be. You're not going to have any trouble pulling off that particular pose. And yeah, we don't have the big attachment on the rifle yet, but so far not really having any issues in terms of the weight of anything, the limbs, uh, the legs or arms, anything. Uh, everything's pr pretty much holding up very well so far. Alright, so let's do talk about negatives, because this kit does have a couple of them, but not too bad really, to be honest. For the most part, this kit is a really good, nice quality kit, uh, so if you like the design, then you'll really have no problems with it. But, with it being an RG, unfortunately one thing that a lot of RGs do suffer from is they have a lot of just kind of loose parts and stuff, kind of just tends to be a little bit more finicky um, as you're posing it, playing around with it and stuff, um, stuff is going to just fall apart a little bit easier. That's just kind of the way it goes with the RG kits, just because it's, a lot of them are such tiny pieces and the connection points, like the actual friction connection points of them are really, really small. So you just have stuff that just falls apart easier. It's just kind of something you have to expect. Um, that's, yeah, there's just kind of not really any way to avoid that, unfortunately, with these kits, just by the way that they are. The other thing that this kit unfortunately suffers from is the same thing that the previous kit, the previous RG, the Shinanju, also suffered from, was just poor hand options. Uh, unfortunately, the Shinanjo was not really that bad, I guess, but, and then this one is, again, not terrible. I mean, you have options, but, uh, the closed fists are awesome. They look great. They look, like, kind of unique in terms of their overall shape. Uh, the trigger finger hand works fine for the rifle, although it does look a bit different. It's okay. The unfortunate part about that is that we only have one trigger finger. We don't have one for the opposite hand. Um, and then just no hand options. I mean, for holding the uh, cannons from the backpack around on the side, like you can see here, uh, you have to use the RG style hands, which are the articulated finger hand, which hands which just kind of are kind of annoying. They're like extra flimsy, and uh, yeah, they're just okay. And it's the same thing for the beam uh, beam sabers as well. If you want to use those, you have to use the real grade uh, hands. So. Um, as much as uh, some people do really like articulated fingers and do kind of like that, especially in master grades and things as well, personally I just kind of prefer fixed pose fingers uh, for pretty much anything. They are usually just better just because they're just more reliable, stuff, stuff doesn't fall apart, they're easier to clean up, they're easier to paint. Uh, so yeah, that could just be me, but so that's just kind of my biggest complaints about this kit is just that uh, like with an ERG, you have to be a little bit careful with everything and um, it just unfortunately doesn't really have the best options in terms of hands. So that is pretty much going to do it for my review of this kit. Uh, I'm sorry, I feel like this is not really one of my better reviews, to be honest. Uh, but um, despite not really being a big fan of this particular design, I tried to show this kit fairly and just give you guys just the kind of pros and cons, just how it is, so that's pretty much it. Now in terms of my plans for this kit, um, with it being a kit that I didn't really care too much about, I wanted to kind of challenge myself and kind of see if, if I could like the design by maybe just changing up the colors. So I'm actually going to be uh, just repainting this kit, like from now. I'm, as soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to start disassembling this and uh, uh, maybe getting ready to do some painting on it very soon. So. You guys will maybe see me doing a work in progress on that. In the work in progress video, I'll talk about what my plans are for the color scheme for this. I'm not going to do any other sort of modification or anything. I may look at like some of the extra parts uh, left over from the Ale Strike and think about maybe changing some of the parts of this, like maybe namely the lower legs or something. Uh, but we'll see. I don't know. I want to just kind of keep it how it is and then just, just change the colors and see if that makes me kind of enjoy the design anymore. So we'll see. Anyway, that's it for the review, guys. If you guys have any other questions or comments, feel free to leave those down below, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.